Hello everyone. This video is part of my Python series where I pick up a topic and teach how it works for string, list, tuple and dictionary together. Today's topic is Python indexing and slicing. By studying all four together, it will help to speed up your learning and you will be able to see the similar or different behavior amongst them. I'm also sharing a lot of code samples which you can use to practice for exam. We will start by learning how to access individual elements using indexing. In Python, indexing refers to the process of accessing one specific element in a sequence, such as a string using its index number. Before learning indexing, you need to know what is an index. Index is a number or location of each element in sequence. It starts from zero. If we take example of this string hello, it has length 5 and when we talk of position, we say h is at position 1, e at 2 and so on. But index always starts from 0. So h is at index 0, e at 1 and so on. It's similar for list and tuple. Note if there is nested list or tuple, each is one element. This is called as forward indexing in Python. Similarly, we have backward indexing too. Here the last element is at index minus 1, second last at minus 2 and so on. You can refer to an element by using forward index or backward index. Now string, list, tuple are ordered sequence. So indexing works only on these three. Since dictionary is mapping, elements are stored in random order so you can access elements only by keys, not with index. So let's take one element of each and see how indexing works. To access any individual element, we use the variable name and then within square brackets, we give the index number. Like here we have given 0 index. It will give us the first element of the sequence. Similarly, if we are asked to extract the last element of string, list or tuple and we use minus 1 index, it will give me the element at the last index. If you want to retrieve any element in between two, you can just give the index and it will retrieve the value. Typically in exam, they will combine multiple concepts and test you on it. Like for an example, extracting a string element and multiplying it by 4. What will be the output in such scenario? Here we get 1 as string. So when you multiply by 4, it replicates it showing the string behavior. Now in list also we multiply by 4. Here the answer is 4 because data type of 1 is integer over here. Now in the tuple question, what will be the answer? Will it find 3? t-1 returns a list and it will search for 3 as one of the elements of list. Since it exists, the answer is true. I want you to also note what is the data type returned when you do indexing. In string, you will get string only as the answer as each of the characters is string only. In list and tuple, you will get whatever is the data type of element you are extracting. So it can be string here, last element is tuple, and in tuple, first element is float, and the last element is list. Now what happens if you give wrong index for any of them? If you give a wrong index, indexing will always give exception index error. Now what about dictionary? How do we access individual elements here if indexing does not work? Here we access elements using the keys. So if we take a dictionary and then give any key in a square bracket, it will give us the value of that key. It doesn't work in reverse. If you give value, you cannot get the key. This is also example of what happens if you give a key that does not exist. It will give you exception key error. Now we know list and dictionary are mutable, so indexing or keys can be used to edit them as well. 
In list if we give square brackets with the valid index and assign a value to it, then the list is updated with the new value at that index. Similarly, in dictionary, if you give a key in square brackets and assign it a value, it will update the value of that key. Now let's take a look at slicing. Slicing works only on sequences, not on dictionary. It means extracting part of string, list or tuple. So first question is, how is it different from indexing and where do we use indexing versus slicing? We use indexing when we want to retrieve only one element of sequence at a time. We use slicing when we want to retrieve multiple elements. In indexing, you can specify only one index. In slicing, we can give start element, end element and also the step value as well as per our requirement. In indexing, if we give wrong index, it will give index error. In slicing, if we give wrong index, it does not give any error. In indexing, the return type is same as the type of the element at that index. But in slicing, if you slice a string, it will return string. List will return list and tuple will return tuple. Now that you know the basic difference, let's see how slicing works. Let's take string as an example. If you take a string and you give in square brackets start index as 1 and end index as 4, it will return to you the substring from 1 to 3. Note that the end index element is not included. The string up to end index is returned. Now for slicing, only the colon is compulsory. If you do not give any start value, then it is assumed that we start from the beginning and if no end index is given, then it means extract everything till the end. You can also use negative index in slicing. It works the same way. The last index is not included. Now let's see the same in list. Here we have a list and in square brackets we give start index and end index. It will return a sublist. Here also you will notice end index is not included. Here too only the colon is compulsory. If you do not give the end value it will give you a list starting from index 3 till the end. Here also you can use negative index and it works exactly like string. Here I want you to note that slicing of list will always return a list. You will see similar behavior for tuple. In square brackets, we can give start and end value separated by colon. Here note that if there is only one value returned in tuple, it prints a comma which you need to remember for exam questions. Here too you can skip start or end or both. So if I skip start, by default it will take from the beginning. Here also you can use negative indexes and it works the same way as forward index. Here I want you to note that slicing of tuple will always return a tuple. Now what happens if we put same number on both sides? In case of string, it gives back empty string since the end index is not included. In case of list, it will return an empty list and for tuple, it will return empty tuple. Now how about if you give starting index which is more than the ending index. It will give you empty string for string. Same behavior for list, you will get empty list and empty tuple for tuple. What happens if you give wrong index means index out of range. Let's say I give ending index beyond the end of the string then it will automatically truncate till the end of the string. Similar for list and tuple too. I can give wrong index for the starting too. Like here in list, it will automatically truncate and start from the beginning of the list. If starting index and ending index both are out of range like in this tuple, then it will give complete tuple from default start to default end. 
As you see, here too we can give negative index. Now in slicing, for all sequences, you can optionally give step value as well, which works similar to the range function. By default, the step value is 1. If you give 1, it will give you the sequence in between the start and end with end value not included. If you give step value of 2, it will give you alternate values from the starting index to ending index. If you give step value of 3, it will give you every third element from starting index to ending index. So if you see, the behavior is same for all sequences. Now this step value can be negative 2, which means go backwards or in reverse. For example, in this string I have given minus 1 as the start and 2 as the end. Then it has given me string starting from the last index in reverse. Here too, if you see ending index is not included. You will see similar behavior for list and tuple. Now what if you give starting index less than the end index and ask it to go in reverse. Here it will give you a blank string as end string is already greater than the start. You will see similar behavior in list and tuple. Here too start index should be more than the end index. If you do not follow it, it will return empty list or tuple. Now if you give default values and negative step value, here you will get the reverse of the string. This is very important and most commonly used to get reverse of any sequence. You can try giving minus 2, minus 3 also as in this list and tuple. In case of minus 2, it will give every second element in reverse. In case of tuple, it is giving us every third element. Now we know list is mutable. So slicing can be used to edit list as well. How does it work? First important thing to remember here is that you can only assign a sequence to a slice like list, tuple or dictionary. If you take a look at the slice here, it is selecting two elements at index 2 and 3. We are assigning a list with two elements. So if you run it, it will replace those two elements with these new elements. Now what happens if you select one element in the list with slicing and assign two elements? In that case, it will replace the one element with two new ones. Note we also assigned a tuple here. Now what happens if we assign a dictionary? We have selected last two elements in slicing. When we run it, you will see it will use only the keys for replacement. So the two elements have been replaced by only one key. Now you can use slicing to delete elements in the list as well. Like here we are assigning empty list to slicing which is selecting two elements. Here both the elements are deleted. Now if you give default start and default end and you know it selects the entire list. If you assign it to empty tuple here, it will delete all elements of the list. You can delete one element too by selecting one element in slicing and assigning it to empty sequence like dictionary here. It will delete the one element. So you can delete one, many or all elements of a dictionary. Next you can use slicing to insert elements in dictionary as well without disturbing other elements. Like if you want to insert element at index 1, we give the same index as start and end and when we run it, it will insert the element at that index. How do you insert element at the end? How about giving minus 1 since it is the last index? The result might not be what you expect. It actually goes to the element at minus 1 index and shift the elements right to make space for the new element. Hence we actually end up inserting it before the last element. To insert at the end, use any index which is beyond last index like we have just used 15 and it has inserted element at the end. 
So that's all we will cover in slicing. In our next video, we will cover functions which can be used on these sequences. Thank you and all the best.